What is up, everybody? I am Yusuf, and I am here to shoot some infrared photography. That's right, infrared. I am using a Sony a7C, and I'm trying out this glitter filter. Sony a7C, and I have the 55 millimeter Zeiss f1.8, sharpest lens on the planet, honestly. Okay, maybe it isn't, but it's one of the sharpest I've ever seen. Even on the XO Mark, they say it's one of the sharpest lenses for Sony systems, but listen, infrared photography, I love it. Let me tell you the story of why I love infrared photography so much. So I will, but I'm telling you right now that I am walking around Greenville, South Carolina, not Falls Park area, but I'm walking towards a little fun area that's kind of like a kid's zone. You'll see what I'm talking about, but here's the first photo, and that's what I mean by infrared photography. So infrared photography comes from infrared film, our eyes can't process or see infrared, but cameras can. So the camera is capturing on this infrared film and our eyes, the way that it processes it, it comes out looking sometimes red or pink. That's how we process that information. And I think it is beautiful. Here's another photo I took of a column under the <laughs> bridge. Beautiful photo, honestly. Um, I have always loved infrared photography. I uh, have messed with it so many times, never on film, because if you shoot film in 2024, you're a pretentious, rich cork sniffer, okay? Get out of here. But uh, I just use the RNI Aerochrome, it's called. It's a filter, which gives you an approximation of what film would actually, infrared film would look like. So that was another cool, I saw some ducks here. So I'm like, hey, yo, let me take a picture of these ducks. And we got some cool sunlight coming down here on the left. And I was like, this is a cool shadow contrast. I love those hard lines caused between shadow and light. But yeah, I love infrared looking film because number one, my favorite color is red. And red is the best color, okay? If you're going to sit there, say red is not the best color, or you think another color is better, no, you're wrong. Okay, red is the best color. So, uh while back, maybe seven, eight years ago, I decided to get the an, the RNI Aerochrome. I, I'm not sure if it was Aerochrome that was out back then, but I, I think it had, they were. But uh, they have a free film pack sample where they have six, seven, or eight. Here's a cool little house. This house sitting right here is right by the city of Greenville, and it's the only house within a 10, 20 block radius. I would love to know the story of that house. So I saw the house. I decided to take a picture of it there. So uh, they have a, a sample pack, which is a free download. You get a bunch of different film looks, if that's your thing. And they also had the infrared filter. So I started using it. I fell in love. I love what it does. It makes photos look so unique. It paints it in red, sometimes pink. I saw this vantage point, I saw the light, I said, hey, maybe there's something interesting here. I'm looking at this composition, I'm saying, let me get this just right. You know, I'm aiming, I'm setting the aperture, and I snap the photo. Look at that infrared beauty. Look at the infrared beauty, so sharp and so beautifully pleasing. Yeah, the, from the first moment that I used it, oh yeah, I'm trying to get something in the foreground here. It's always advantageous when you get something in the foreground. This is kind of my style, I try to get stuff that's in the foreground, blocking part of the frame. I just like doing that. Just trying to look for the right moment to take this photo. And then boom, I snapped it right there. So it gives a lot of information here. Yeah, so I use the Aerochrome filter and I love it. So I said, you know what, I'm going to keep doing this. It's a very, very specific look. It's more for my personal work. I, I've never used it for any client work. People won't really get it. This is a really beautiful shot here. We got the rocks here on the bottom left, the water, the trees. There's a lot happening compositionally in that photo that I thought was very pleasing. The uh, aerochrome infrared stuff is for my work. You know, clients are not going to understand or see, you know, why the heck does everything look red here? <clears throat> the anything is weird. But me, I actually like it. So I saw this uh, fence over here on the left and I said to myself, you know what, this is interesting, the way that the light is hitting the ground here. And uh, I just want i wanted to see what can I capture with this light and with this composition, with all the light on the left, the darkness happening. So I snapped this photo, I snap another one, 
and I was focusing in the foreground and then I said, sorry, the background. And then I wanted to focus in the foreground. It's, it's just playing around. You gotta play around, try different things. Oh, okay, I didn't do the foreground, but I was like, let me try to get that into it more. Then we get, you know, the difference of the curvy and people are gonna be like, whoa, this is kind of weird and different. I saw this little, uh, you know, art stent easel and it was red and I was like, I'm, I'm thinking of everything being in red as I'm thinking the photos because it was my main goal to do infrared shooting today. So I was thinking, okay, what if I get red into this? What's going to happen? So I talk, took a shot of this and, you know, I got some lines on from the bridge and from the easel and from the fence right there. And I just think it's really cool. So I'm shooting infrared aerochrome. I'm thinking of it in my head as I'm taking shots. But also, I am using this uh, this this uh, filter, which is a glitter filter. And I'm not really the biggest fan. For, for photography, I'm not the biggest fan of using filters, like ND filters. I saw this little rock formation here on the bottom, so I was like, let me get this photo. I'm not the biggest fan of filters, ND filters, or any of those black mist filters. You know, I don't need my photos looking like a 90s soap opera. I love this shot. Maybe this is one of my favorite shots here because you got the winding path and all that beauty of the infrared look, the red. Yeah, I'm not... Those, you know, a lot of YouTubers, they're into the Black Pro Mist filters. And I can get it if you want to kind of cut down on the you know, highlights, roll off the highlights a bit. But making the highlights bloom, making it look like a 1970s camera, you know, it, it all depends on your personal look okay but if people are going to say the word cinematic you know get out of here okay cinematic don't mean nothing look at this shot here very beautiful again uh so what this filter is doing if you look at the highlights it's kind of giving blooming the highlights a little bit just a little bit so this is just it's not a black promise filter eighth or quarter it's called a glitter filter it's a knf i'm gonna have the link down below by the way it's gonna be an affiliate link i make money if you purchase from that link, it's just two to 6%, but I want to be transparent with you. Amazon affiliate link, I make money from that. And uh, I saw these leaves right here and I was like, this is going to look really beautiful if the leaves are red and behind it is, you know, the highlights are going to be blooming all around it. So I try to set up and, and get the shot. And uh, I think it really turns out great. And as you can see, it's just a very moody image. I love that. I love getting as much greenery as possible when I'm going to be shooting infrared. Okay, so what I was saying was a lot of YouTubers are like, oh, cinematic, cinematic. First of all, cinematic doesn't mean anything. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I love this. The framing here. Yeah, the frame is so beautiful and cool. If I had a subject right there, that would be really cool. I need to do one of these street foot photo walks. By the way, if, let me know, everybody who's watching. Should I try to get a model, bring in a model to for the street photo walks, street photography. I think I would love to do that. I love shooting with people. Portraits is one of my favorite things to shoot, interacting with people, being with people. Down here, I'm coming, I'm trying to look around, what's around here, and then I see something hanging from the tree, and it looks uh, interesting. I have no idea what it is, actually, but it's like, I'm trying to get a shot of it, but the camera's not focusing right. I'm looking for the manual focus switcher button on this lens, and there isn't one. So it's like, okay, I got to go into the FN menu. And this is me screwing around trying to find, as you can tell, I, you know, go into manual focus really often. But then I, I couldn't remember. So I just uh, focused on the tree first and that allowed me to get the focus in the foreground instead of in the background. And I took a shot of this thing and I, I think it's like a beautiful shot. Zeiss 55 1.8, beautiful lens. Look at the bokeh in the back, smooth and creamy yet incredibly sharp item see that's the thing with a lot of 1.8 1.4 lenses it's not sharp it's not sharp unless you stop down to 1.8 but the zeiss 1.8 is sharp it's so sharp i love i love this lens i love it i saw this was cool you see all the blooming highlights going on okay so cinematic doesn't mean anything because in the cinemas they have movies like mission impossible and then they have movies that like Mad Max and then they have movies that are you know Murder on the Orient Express C completely different looks completely different lighting completely di different styles 
So the word cinematic doesn't mean anything. I saw some red berries. I was like, let me get the red leaves and red berries. I think that came out really beautiful. Yeah, cinematic is it's just a buzzword. It doesn't mean anything to me, okay? So I'm not the f biggest fan of when YouTubers are like, hey, you want cinematic shots? Put on this filter. And all it's really doing is it's making it look like a 90s soap opera, okay? It, it's hilarious because there's this huge juxtaposition. So many YouTubers are anti-60 FPS because they're like, oh, it's like a soap opera. But then... They put on a, a Black Pro Mist filter, which blooms or highlights and makes the image muddy and makes the, the image not sharp. It looks like a, a 90s soap opera. <laughs> so it's hilarious. I thought the composition was interesting here. And one thing that I love doing is I like putting the camera down on things. So I put the camera down on the pole. And here is, you can see. And I'm thinking, I want to get this shot. I love the framing of everything, the way... There's the vanishing point in the middle, but I want to get a shot of the car because I know that the highlights are going to bloom on the car. It's going to make it have look like a little dreamy. So it's, as you can see, boom. And I'm just waiting for cars to come by to try to get, snap the right photo. I'm not the type of person to put it on burst mode, 20 frames per second, just hold the button down. Okay, I, I, I try to get the shot. Okay, that's just my style. But it depends. You know, sometimes I do like to put on lower medium. But when I'm walking around doing street photography, you know, just, just on single shot mode. So here I'm trying. You can see, look, this was my favorite one. I, I think is really interesting where that lined up with the window of the car. And then I saw these leaves, but I said, let me get these bars in the foreground, bringing in the foreground elements. You see the foreground elements, never forget them. Okay, they're a thing of beauty. So I got that shot there and got the leaves right here. So yeah. They are, uh, they're hilarious. They're like, and uh, 60 FPS is going to make it look like a TV show, but then they put quarter black pro mist filters on and makes it look like an 80s soap opera. So it's, it makes no sense. Okay. And cinematic doesn't mean anything. All right. Cinematic does not mean a single thing. So, uh, but I decided to get this filter. Yeah, this is a cool shot, but this next one is even better where you can see the razor thin depth of field. Of the 1.8 look at that do you see that just that is in focus i love that it's i love that cat's eye style that's called cat's eye when everything is blurry in the foreground the background you can see just a line of sharpness i love that photo so i didn't want to get a black pro mist pro mist filter i just wanted to play around i was looking around i was trying to see what's something that doesn't reduce the sharpness make it look muddy but does just blooms the highlights just a little bit not too much and then i saw a video from gx ace i don't know if you guys know the youtuber gsx gx ace he makes some of the best photography content out there and he was talking about this is a really cool one too the composition and the infrared i love the infrared so he makes some of the coolest videos he makes artwork okay he's inspired by blade runner and black uh, sorry, uh, black sci-fi or, or black, uh, steampunk. Yeah, steampunk style. Um, he kind of combines that with neo-noir. And he puts like these masks on and filters on his voice. And it's it's so cool. His cinematography is amazing. He, he makes incredible videos. His photography, you know, it's just my subjective opinion. But his photography is kind of dookie. Okay, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> They're all like really dark and moody and kind of garbage looking. But... It works perfectly for him and his style, okay? So who am I to judge? I love that. I saw that leaf hanging there from the cobwebs. I'm like, let me get that with the composition right there. I'm all about composition and lighting. I don't know if you know this, but I'm always talking about it. But GX Aces, Fos, he does... In terms of doing review videos, it just doesn't work for me. It's like, oh, look at this camera. Look at this lens. He takes photos. It looks like they were shot in the with a 70s camera. All of his photos look like that. And then his compositions are really different compared to mine. Like I'm, his style, his photography is amazing. It's just not my thing. Okay, so I don't mean to rap, you know, rap on him. I don't mean to say any bad things towards him, but I'm not gonna say anything about about his video work. His video work is awesome. The way that he makes the videos, the style. No one is making videos like that on YouTube. Okay, and it's influenced a lot of other YouTubers. I saw Manny Ortiz. Uh, after GX Ace, uh, GX Ace, this is a cool one. It came out a little lighter pink, but I like how the, you know, the fence is right there. 
Man, Manny Ortiz, after GX Ace got huge, I've been watching for GX Ace for a long time. I was subbed to him like under 10K subscribers. He got kind of big. And then Manny Ortiz, all of a sudden, he's got moody lighting. He's got cool shots. He's got B-roll that looks like him. Like p people on DSLR shooter too. He starts emulating that. Oh, this is probably one of my favorite shots of the day here because we got the leaves. We're going to get that infrared beauty. We got the lines, the foreground, and all the different textures happening. We got the bridge in the background. Look at that. It's like leading you to somewhere. And I just love this. I love this shot right here. I was just trying out different shots, like getting it focused in the foreground, getting focused in the background. So yeah, GX Ace was talking about how he uses a glitter filter instead of a black pro mist filter. So I decided to get it and it's giving me the desired effect. Now, I don't know if it's for me. If you like it, you know, affiliate link down below, I'm going to make money. You know, I need to, I've only been having mild cheddar guys. I've never had sharp or extra sharp. Okay. I'm not that rich, but with your help, you can support me, help me out. <laughs> I saw this little pig statue here. And I got it. It looks really cool. With your help, I can have some sharp cheddar cheese. And you do that by buying from the affiliate links down below where I make a commission, 100% transparency. I'll have that down below along with all the other gear I'm using. Sony A7C, Zeiss 55 millimeter. One point. Honestly, don't buy the Zeiss from my affiliate link because it still goes for $1,000, but you can get them used for 400, 500. And it is incredible. And 50 millimeters is my jam. I saw this little gingerbread house. Look at this gingerbread house. And I was like, let me take a photo. And the Sony camera is so good on autofocus. It was grabbing the eye of the drawing of the old witch from Snow White. It was just locked onto her. It's just so awesome. So uh, yeah, Sony A7C Zeiss 55 1.8. 50 millimeters is my jam. Uh, when I got a Fuji X-C1, I only had the 35, which is a 50 millimeter equivalent. I had that lens for four years before I buy any other lens, you know? So this focal length is my focal length. I love it. I saw some interesting things happening and I was trying to see, hoping someone would walk by, but not many people walk by around here, but lucky, luckily for me, you're going to see, look at how those highlights are blooming. Luckily for me, somebody is walking by and I get the shot and I'm like, this is it. This is the award winner. I'm going to win $50,000 from this photo. Look at that. Look at that. Do you get a better photo than that? No, I don't think so. All right. No, I don't think so. Yeah, 50 millimeter. I live in 50 millimeters. Fujifilm XC1, I had the 35, which is a 50 millimeter equivalent for four years before I got any other lenses. Honestly, I could just live with a 50. I could live it for me I, I, the focal lengths tell me what your favorite focal lengths are down below in the comments my favorite focal lengths are the 50 millimeter the 135 millimeter i love that i i just get an 85 right now i don't have a 135 i used to have one for nikon cameras and for my fuji film i love the look of that i love the look of that and then on the wide angle yeah this is a cool shot here this is this is really nice man sometimes i'm so hard on myself about my photos i'm walking around saying these are going to be dookies this is going to suck but then i look at the photos i'm like hey you know what that's kind of a banger now this next photo coming up is honestly it's not a banger i just saw a field and i was thinking oh everything is going to be red and it's going to be beautiful so i got a shot with everything in focus and i was like all right let me try to focus on something it came out a little better so you can see here again i got the foreground element so there's a bunch of red. Now, if someone was standing in there, that would be perfect. And then here I got one, but I didn't really get the focus right. Unfortunately, I don't mind showing you the photos where I missed the focus, okay? Because I want to show you everything I'm doing. You can buy this gear with my affiliate links, cough, cough. Uh, I make money if you buy from those links again. But you can replicate the shots, okay? I'm not some guy who's going to, you know, keep gatekeep photography. You can get most of what I'm doing. Now, you're not going to have the same vision as me, but you'll have the same quality. You'll get similar shots, okay? It all comes from the brain. And th this is my second favorite shot from the day. Look at this. Just the trees, the way they are, the blooming highlights in the background. Love it. Love it. Okay, back to lenses. 50 millimeter, 135, but I, I just use 85 for portraits because 135 is tough for portraits. 
you gotta stand pretty far back. You can't really talk with a person. 85, and I love something wide. I like something really wide. 16, 18. That's what I like. Not even a 20. It's gotta be a 16 or an 18. Beautiful. Those are those are my favorite focal lengths. Basically, if I could just choose three, if I could just choose one lens, give me the 50 millimeter. If I could choose three, it would be an 18, a 50, and a 135. I don't need any other lenses. My life is good. See, I, I saw this wall and I just took a picture on the left of the part that's broken up. I thought that would look really cool. And I think it does look cool. And this, this wall is part of this house over here on the left. I want to know who the owners are. The house, maybe they bought a house, this house before the whole area was built up because they're right by downtown and no other houses are around. Yeah, as I was walking back, I saw this guy uh, walking. I said to myself, maybe I should take a photo of him. Something's interesting, but I don't know. It wasn't vibing with me. He's kind of in running gear. And I don't think it was going to match up very well. So I didn't take a photo, but I'm just trying this filter out. Uh, I don't know if it's my style. If the photos, if you're seeing them and like them, you know, go for it. But I don't think it's my style. I think I'm going to return it actually, because this is the first time I use a filter. So I'm setting up for the shot here. And then I see this, uh, cyclist coming. So I got him in the shot. Check this out. It's, you know, these beautiful moments this is like the, yeah, right there. That's cool. That is cool. I like that actually. And then I said to myself, I just took a great shot. Let me take a shit shot. So I just took a shot of the area being empty right here. So not as interesting, but all those bloomy highlights. But yeah, I don't, I think I'm going to return it. Not the biggest fan of the bloomy highlights. The only thing I would want from a filter is if I could reduce the harshness of the highlights. And I don't know if there's a filter that exists that does that without making it bloomy or without making it look misty. I don't want that. I don't want that look. It's not my style. It's not what I like. I'm more of a, you know, clean, sharp person where, you know, I'm dictating what's sharp, what's not sharp. I think I may try to use this lens or this filter for portraits. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that dreamy 80s, 70s kind of look. All those portraits from back then have those bloomy, glowy highlights in them. Love putting my camera down on something. So you can see there's like this leading line that curves in the beautiful red, the infrared look. I love it. You can, I'm going to link down below the Aerochrome where you can download it. This, this is not a sponsored thing. This is not going to be an affiliate link for this. It's just going to put a direct link. I know rare for YouTubers to put a direct link to the free download for the RNI Aerochrome. So you can get this filter and try it out for your photos too. It works really well when there's a lot of green happening. So uh, check it out because I love it. I love the look of it. I want to do portraits with somebody, but it kind of messes with someone's skin tone, kind of gives them like a smurfy look. So it's tough with portraits. So I see a lock. This is what I'm aiming at. I see this lock down here. Look at this lock. I was just sitting there. I just took a shot. Beautiful bouquet. Be this lens is just, ugh, this lens is amazing. I've done studio work with this lens. So insanely sharp. So sharp. I love it. I love how sharp it is. And then I saw some twigs. I'm like, let me take a picture of the twigs. Let me see how the highlights bloom. It didn't really bloom that much there. So it was kind of useless. But that was my street photo walk. Not a really long one today. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, really appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the photos and the style. Thank you so much for watching and have the awesomest day.